Let's imagine this scenario, okay? If you've ever played Jenga, right, where you take out a brick and then place it on the top very carefully so that, you know, the pile doesn't fall, and then maybe grab another one and keep doing this. Well, what we can do is we can um, imagine if you needed to simulate this for whatever reason, it would be very difficult to animate that by hand, like eventually when you get to the point where it's going to fall, and you would have, it, it would be very time consuming, right? So I feel like what Maya is doing is they're just trying to figure out, hey, is there a more efficient way? Could I mathematically figure out how these bricks would fall based on gravity, their weight, and all that kind of stuff? <clears throat> so, okay, let's say, and I would keep you know, taking some stuff out, making sure that it could actually fall. Like maybe if I want to make guarantee that it'll fall, maybe I'll, I'll do something like, uh, let's see, like that. I feel like for sure that would fall. Okay. I wouldn't be a very good Jenga player, but to simulate dynamics, um, I think this will be, this will work. Okay. So what you'll notice, um, I want to make sure that also none of these bricks are kind of penetrating through one another. That could kind of confuse it. Um, like here, you can see that I've got I've got a little bit of room between all of these, but it looks like these. I definitely want to make sure that they're up. And you have to be very careful with dynamics, right? It otherwise uh, the computer's going to get really confused so I got to be really careful I'd rather give it a little bit too much room than not enough room let it fall and rest a little bit okay and there's a lot of stuff going on here right there's a lot of uh, bricks maybe I'll take one other out just to make sure and I'll, I'll give that weight over here now for sure it'll fall okay um, so if I select all of this stuff well, first of all, I need to make the ground a passive rigid body. So if I select the ground, I'm going to go here to passive, um, let's see, passive rigid body. And now if I select all of these, deselect the ground and go to gravity, they're all going to be connected to the same gravity. And if I hit play, okay. So it highlighted these saying that eh, there's some interpenetration happening. Double check the placement of that. But what you'll notice is that I did not pause it. It is calculating very, very slowly right now. Okay, and it looks like those that were interpenetrating um, are wrong, but I can see the progress down here. Okay, depending on your computer, this might be faster or slower uh, than what I'm showing, but I feel like realize it's really taking its time to calculate this properly. Now, granted at the top, that's that's messed up. So I'm just gonna stop this simulation. And to stop it, I might have to kind of hold down escape. And, and then I'm gonna rewind to the beginning, okay? Just to kind of correct that, I'm going to, instead of wasting time making sure that those are perfectly placed, I'm just gonna delete those for now. And let's just kind of look at this, because I, I believe the rest of these are, are perfectly spaced uh, where they're not touching each other. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play again. And now you can see that none of them are highlighting, so there's no problem as far as their placement's concerned. However, I think that it's going to take a while for this simulation to happen. And you could just imagine if you had a ton of stuff that was dynamic in your scene, the scene would start to go really, really slow and it feels like you're kind of like moving in quicksand. So you have to be patient with dynamics, especially if you have stuff that's super complex. But I feel like if you are patient, you can get some really accurate, cool results. And even if, you know, kind of even being patient and waiting like this is still going to be significantly faster than animating something like this by hand. Now, and maybe we can't even tell, but this this tower is starting to lean and it is starting to fall, okay? And just like those cooking shows where they say, hey, this is how you mix 
you know, the recipe and put it in the oven and then wait and then it comes out and they're like, here's the final product. Um, I actually have this finished so you can see it. And kind of like that analogy that I was using, it's actually called the baking the simulation, okay? And so I'm not gonna let this um, continue to happen here. I feel like if I did let it go, it would still, you know, it would, it would finish. But I'm just gonna hit escape, okay? And now it's done and you can start to see that, yeah, the, the tower is leaning, it's about to fall, right? But I'm just gonna open up a final one here. Okay, so here's one uh, that I was careful to, you know, position these uh, correctly and make sure that none of them are penetrating. And then I was just, I just left it to animate. So let's take a look. Uh, very cool. You can see how natural all those blocks fall. And once again, I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to um, try to animate that by hand. Now, occasionally, like if I pause this, if I look through, um, you know, there may be some bricks penetrating through one another. I mean, technically there shouldn't be, but I feel like um, the computer is just doing its best to try to figure out what should happen, okay? Legally, like in, a, in, the, in the real world. So every brick is responding to another one. Now you might be saying, well, how is this one falling so fast with before it was taking forever? Plus you'll notice that I can do something like this. I can actually scrub back and forth in the timeline. Well, how is that possible? Well, I feel like what I did was I selected all of these um, pieces before I hit simulate, and then I went to um, edit um, keys, and then I went down here to bake simulation, okay? Like I was talking about that analogy about putting it in the oven and then just having it done. That's kind of the idea here, and that's probably kind of where they got the idea for the word bake from. Because you can see what happens is that it, when I bake the simulation, um, so if I click on that, what it would do is it would play very, very slow, okay, trying to figure out where every brick goes dynamically. But in every frame, it's recording its position. And what do we mean by that? It means that it's keyframing its position. It's memorizing where it was. And that way, once it's done. I mean, this might take like an hour to let that simulate. Okay, probably not that much, but let's say if it took an hour to simulate that, um, then, but at along the way, it's remembering its position in, in, in other words, key, um, baking it, then you can just rewind it and play it in real time and it'll play just fine. Okay, now that brings up another point of if I right click on the timeline, I have options for my playback speed. I can go real time. That means what it's gonna do is when I hit play, it's gonna try to maintain 30 frames a second, which is 30 frames to give the illusion of one second of animation. And it's going to play that no matter what, no matter if the scene gets too complex, it's going to try to maintain that to give us accurate timing. However, with dynamics, when it's simulating, we can see how slow it was um, trying to calculate this out on the previous scene. Well, if it's that slow, it has to calculate every single frame. So in that case, by going to try to do 30 frames a second, it's not even worth it because it's not ready to go that fast yet. So in that case, our playback speed should be play every frame, okay? By saying play every frame, I don't care if it takes one minute per frame to figure out the calculation. It needs to figure out that calculation. So I'm gonna give it as much time as it needs to 
to figure out how long it should take, okay, um, per, before moving on to the next frame because you can't jump frames. So I feel like if you're an animator, if you're doing it by hand, real time is uh, preferred. But if you're doing dynamics, I would set it to this last one, play every frame. And if it can play them 30 frames a second, it's gonna max out at real time. So if you're doing dynamics, I would recommend to do this one, play every frame, max real time. Let, let it calculate as long as it needs. And then you could select everything and then go to edit keys, bake simulation. And that way it's gonna record it and then, it, then it'll play awesome. It'll play in real time then. All right, cool. So hopefully that was um, helpful and, and kind of a way to kind of help optimize and speed up your dynamics. And I, I also think about baking as, hey, let's let the computer figure out the dynamic simulation and then try to get dynamics out of the scene as fast as possible. Because right now, there's no gravity in the scene. There's nothing. Um, in fact, if I deleted the bottom half of this, those other bricks aren't going to fall. They're still going to move just like that because it's just all an illusion. They're not really interacting from each other anymore. They're just memorizing their position. So just something kind of cool to think about um, that now this is a lot more efficient and there's no dynamics in the scene anymore. Okay. It's as if we animated it by hand, but we just uh, use dynamics to get there.